pharmacist. Uh, I studied metabolism, got my PhD in the study of uh, type 2 diabetes and uh, the molecular mechanisms behind it, specifically in skeletal muscle and fat tissue, how insulin signaling works, how it stops working in people who get sick. Uh, right now I'm working on a startup that aims to cure obesity by giving people the opportunity to freely participate in a completely open source genomic study. So anybody that has genetic data that they want to donate, along with fitness tracking data, can freely donate it to my platform and benefit from the research that we're going to do on it. Well, I, I grew up a very fat kid, and it, uh, I know that it's a very uh, painful thing to do. It definitely makes you be unpopular kid on the playground, but beyond that, it also gives you a lot of health problems that, that really creep up later in life and fundamentally limits your life. So I started a company that aims to unlimit people's lives by, by, sh by giving them the opportunity to, to, to pull away those limitations by better understanding their genome and how it interacts with their environment. Scientifically, um, I got my start in astronomy, and when I was a teenager, I really liked Carl Sagan because he opened up my mind to the idea that I was a product of the universe. You know, he, he used to say that we're all star stuff. And uh, later in life, when I got into genetics, because I wanted to, I wanted to lose the weight, and I wanted to understand why I got fat in the first place, I started identifying with certain figures in the field that really promote the rights of fat people and really promote not shaming them anymore because it's not their fault. And, and specific, minds that, uh, specific names that come to mind are Jeffrey Friedman who discovered the leptin hormone. Uh, in most of his public lectures he really emphasizes that it's not people's fault. And Robert Lustig as well is also a, a hero of mine. He, he uh, very firmly says the same things uh, in terms of not blaming people for their condition. Um, and I've, I've taken away from all these people the, the humbling understanding that I'm a product of the universe around me, I'm a product of, of genetics that have been evolved over millions of years, and uh, it, it's really given me perspective into how people work, not only how their body works, but how their minds work. I, I, I really love the fact that when I walk down the street and I watch people interact, that there's some kind of explainable phenomenon going on that, that explains everything that, that's about them. We're all really machines on the inside, and there's, there's always an answer for what's going on. Like, in grad school, I, I really enjoyed digging into genetic data sets, specifically gene expression data sets and proteomics data sets and finding patterns. Sorry, just go. Uh, and I, I remember in grad school that I got, I got really excited when I realized that the pathway that I was studying in type 2 diabetics was the same pathway that Cynthia Kenyon identified in, in life extension of little C. elegans roundworms, okay. specifically the insulin signaling axis, the, the, uh, the FOXO gene and its interaction with downstream ubiquitin proteasome pathways. Like, that knowledge gave me a perspective that metabolic syndrome is really a disease of aging. And it, it, uh, it dramatically changed the way that I view the disease and how to approach it going forward. Hmm. I, I, I really enjoy nature. I, I like going hiking, I like going swimming, I like seeing beautiful things and thinking about the underlying mechanisms that make them as beautiful as they are. I also really have a passion for neuroscience and cognitive science. I want to learn more about my brain and, and how, the, how, how the various uh, aspects of people's personality comes about and things that we can't even see. I'd say for the first time in my life I'm actually doing something that directly impacts people. I'm not sitting in a lab writing papers that very few people in the world will read. I'm not sitting on a mountaintop staring at the stars. I, I'm, I'm directly trying to help people who are suffering. It, it, this is the first time in my entire life I've actually felt like I have a purpose. My passion is to keep people healthy however long they live. I feel that society pretends that it is no longer ageist, that old people are people too. But in practice it doesn't behave that way because we don't put enough effort into ensuring that the main determinant of quality of life, namely health, is actually preserved in old age. The big thing that happened to me that put me on this particular path to work on the biology of aging and try to do something about it was when I realized that hardly anybody else was doing so. 
I went through the first nearly 30 years of my life presuming, and not even really asking anybody, presuming that everybody agreed that ageing is the world's most important problem. And it was only very gradually and dimly that I began to realise in my late 20s that most people didn't think that way. Most people had just given up on ageing and put it out of their minds. And I thought that was appalling and eventually I decided I need to dedicate my life to doing something about it. I think really the thing that I'm most proud of is not one memory, but rather the feeling that I've been able to inspire a large number of people to get involved. The community building that I've achieved. Certainly I've made a number of what I believe are important scientific insights that have been the foundation for the work that Centre Research Foundation does. But really what matters the most is that there's a community of people who are just as talented and committed and hardworking and dedicated as I am and who will be able to help this mission to be achieved more quickly than otherwise. I l I'm a really lucky guy. I'm one of the very few people in the world who can say that they've actually been able to spend their lives doing what they wanted to. You know, I am working on what I want to do, I'm actually demonstrating a degree of success in it. Nothing could be better. The people I really look up to are the people in my community who are just the foot soldiers really, who work just as hard as me, who are just as dedicated and so on, but who don't get any of the adulation that I'm constantly festooned with.